I thought that uh, the first half was well played tactically. I thought we had quite good control of the game and uh, we weren't we weren't doing 100% what we wanted to be doing, but there's another team on the field called the Lando Pirates who don't want you to do that. So it isn't that easy. But the times that we did, I thought we looked very good offensively. Uh, I think that going up was a, was a blow to us. We, we planned to have Lebo as a, as a false nine and drop a little bit deeper and try and get our quick players, Karma and, and Kieran, driving inside, uh, challenging their centre backs. Uh, and Karma, Karma going up, we had to shuffle the pack a little bit. But uh, second half was obviously, obviously a different, a different game. Pirates got back into it. Uh, I thought in the first half we've we got, we got a goal. I can't when, when Keegan scores. I can't say 100 percent because I'm not seeing it again. But it looked, it looked uh, a, a good run. It was what we've been working on. Uh, then Pirates get back in. We make a mistake, they get back in, and then they throw the kitchen sink at us. So it's, it's uh, we get a couple of injuries, we've got to keep changing. And uh, we'd already said that we would change uh, Lebo and Leo at half time. And then Leo getting the hamstring, that's uh, it had us changing and losing a bit of balance. And with Pirates throwing the kitchen sink at us and working their socks off, it was, it became uh, a battle to, to preserve, to preserve what we've got. But we showed great discipline, and on our corner, on our corner that we worked on just for this game, that was uh, that was great that that one went in. Uh, but then the last ten minutes, I've just said to the players, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with the way that we managed the game. You know, the decisions that we took on the ball to allow them to deliver more balls into our box. Uh, one could have bounced off the post and gone in, and one could have bounced off the post and gone out, and you know. We were living on a knife edge, so uh, delighted, delighted to win the derby, delighted for everybody at the football club, including the supporters. But uh, we have to be better than that. We have to manage games better. And we have to stick, stick to what we, what we said we were doing better. But uh, I would just have one closing comment. It's that Bernard Parker probably gave one of the best performances I've seen of a PSL player today. So talk of him being too too old, I think people should absolutely uh, put that one away for, for a while anyway, because if he plays like that, he get in any team in the PSL. Uh, coach, I just want to touch on, on what you just said briefly, Coach. Uh, Bernard Parker, fantastic performance, big performance from him. Uh, coach, what, what, what is it that you say to him? I mean, uh, time and time and time again, he's proven his worth to the club at his age as well. And some of the KZG supporters are still torn between him. Is he a good player? Is he not? He's old. Of course, he's old. But the performance that he puts in, just your, what is it that you tell Bernard Parker to continuously you know, uh, give such performances in important games? Thank you. Well, let me let me share let me share a statistic first with the, with the people that think he's too old. Bernard ran more than anybody else in the team tonight. He, he ran over 13 kilometres. David Beckham was praised up to the up to the the high heavens when he ran 12.4 against Greece in the World Cup qualifier for England. Bernard ran over 13 tonight. Uh, what I say to him, Bernard is a Bernard is a, a marvelous human being. He's a he's a he's a great footballer. He's a good professional. He's a model professional, and but he's a great human being. So you can talk to Bernard on a on a on a level that it's not just about firing him up to play football. I think Bernard thrives on stretching himself, stretching himself as a person, stretching himself as a, as a player, stretching himself to to be what Kaiser Chiefs need him to be. And if and if he's sitting in the stand, he will be the best player in the stand. And if he's on the bench, he will be a great bench player. And that's his attitude. So. All I do is I try and make sure that he stays in that zone where he can give that sort of performance. It's his credit that he can still give it because that means that even if I can give a little bit of inspiration, the, the motivation comes from Bernard Parker, no, nowhere else. But I just want to find out if you have checked with the, with the medical team um, on Kamabilia Bissouim coming off in the first half and then Leonardo Castro also went off just uh, after less than 15 minutes in the pitch. 
Yeah. Both of those injuries are very disappointing because, you know, when you work when you work at a, an elite club, your 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 biggest enemy is soft tissue injuries, and the reason they're the biggest enemy is because they they are more or less being put out of business now because of our training methods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we have two players in one game that both get hamstring strains, which means that there's something there's something not right with our loading. So both of them have got hamstring injuries. That varies in, in time that they're out, but uh, I'm guessing that they won't be training for a, a week at least. Leo's was a bit worse because it pinged. Karma's was getting worse and stretched, but I think we got him off in time. Uh, can you please indulge us into your, the way you set up your, your team today? It looked like a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2. Can you please just indulge us into how you set up your team for the W today? Thank you. We played 4 3 3. We played 4 3 3 with uh, Lebs as a, as a false nine because we wanted to bring him short and get Keegan and, and Karma challenging their two centre backs with their pace. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted him to be a false nine, and as he drops down as the false nine, Jabula would drop in between our centre backs uh, to give a, a bit of a, a, three, a three man, three centre back build up, but with a, a 4 3 3. Uh, further up the further up the field, so that's how we set it up. But unfortunately, after after Karma came off, that that was changed. You now Bernard went from the midfield role because we wanted Bernard also arriving a little bit more late on. Uh, we passed those staying a little bit more, and that balance was was out the window because obviously Bernard had to go forward, and then we brought Kieran on. Kieran, I thought, did quite well. Did quite well in that role. It's difficult to go on. In the middle of a derby and find your feet, but I think he did quite well. And then when Leo had to come off as well, we didn't have the false nine. Uh, we played with Bernard through the middle again, uh, as a more of a more of a, a traditional nine. So uh, those were the shifting in betweens, and and then we went to a, a, a straight flat out three four three, trying to leave our three up for for the transitions to wrap the game up. But at the same time, I've been three centre backs to try and deal with the bombardment that we that we were getting from uh, from the Pirates' uh, back line. Coach, uh, what did you make of Brendan Peterson's performance? You saw some nice things there, especially towards the end of the game. And um, if you may, do you feel the fans sometimes are unfair uh, in criticising a player of Bernard Parker? I know you spoke a lot about. Parker in his press conference, but if he may, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brandon was outstanding. Brandon has been outstanding since he came into the team. And yes, the one save right at the death there, it, it gave us the win, didn't it? Because that clean through, it's a one-on-one -on -one and he makes a save. That's a, a game-changing save. So that's what he's there for. His goalkeeper coach will tell you that's what he, is. That's what he works very, very hard to do. Uh, but I think he deserves a, a pat on the back, a massive pat on the back. But the way he, the way he's coming to the team and uh, and he's, re he's really thrown his hat in the ring and said, I want to stay around. Uh, Bernard, look, I, I know that football is a game of opinions. Every, everybody shouldn't think the same way as Stuart Baxter. And everybody doesn't think the same way as Jurgen Klopp or Fred Vlogs or and the guy at the pizza store down the corner. He's, he's got every right to his opinion as well. But when we look at Bernard, I think even the most ardent Chiefs fan that's, that's maybe had a little bit of a we, we should renew the team and he's had that and they've had that sort of desire. I've got to look at Bernard and say that this guy loves Kaiser Chiefs Football Club. He loves being a player, he loves everything about the place, and he puts his body on the line. And I think if for no other reason they should respect that. So I think Bernard's got no divine right to get to get to get praised. Absolutely not. He, he plays poorly the same as everybody else and he, and he hears it from the technical staff. But he's so well liked by his teammates. He's so respected by his opposition that I think it would be a shame if he's not appreciated. If Sometimes maybe not for the performance on the day, but for the person that he is, that he's absolute. If you cut him, he will bleed uh, gold and black. He will, he will bleed. So that's... He, he, He's, he's that sort of person. So, yeah, I think he's a shame. But again, I don't, I don't tell the, the supporters what they should think. 
They don't. They don't need to think what what I'm instructing them to think. They've got their own mind, and that's part of the 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 joy of football, isn't it? Everybody's got an opinion. Uh, coach, I'm sure you'll be you'll agree with me that this win has made you and the technical staff, and probably this will spill over to the playing staff, that they believe that you'll catch up with Sundowns. Like you said uh, prior to the game, that the league is not lost. Am I correct by saying that? I run the risk, I run the risk of being branded a complete fool and buffoon by saying it. But what I said before going to the game was that we don't know where this, the, the two games are, are going yet. But what we have to do is we have to bring pressure to bear on Sundowns. Now, if we can beat Pirates, which we have, and, uh, and, if, and if we are given those two games to play, it's a potential six points, and we have to play Sundowns one more time, if we can beat them in that game and keep breathing down their neck, maybe they'll drop a few points. They're, they're, they're engaged on, on, on more than one front, so they know that it's their league to lose, and I'd be a fool to say... Well, we are going to. I would say what we are going to do is we're going to breathe down their neck as long as we can, as hard as we can, so that when we actually play them, that it means something. Now, I could also be that we don't get the games to play and we lose our next game and Sundowns win and people say, well, that's it all over. Yeah, that's a possibility too. But as the Kaiser Chiefs coach, and as you rightly say, every win that we get, especially one away from home against Pirates, that prolongs that possibility that we could be breathing down their necks. And we'll do everything we can to do to do that. Um, you know, the situation could have been could have been different, you know, if it wasn't for the late uh, two one winner from Ato. Um, as you mentioned before, you know, they were too been different close. if we'd have got a goal in the first half with Keegan, Keegan Dolly. Probably been different if I wore a black suit instead of a grey suit. So are we gonna to get to a question now? Yes. Yeah. Um, there were two close calls um, where Dolly was, was called offside and the, the Pirates goal. So instead of 2 0, it was 1 all all of a sudden. Um, what's your opinion on uh, um, VAR? You know, is it needed in, in a league like of the stage of South Africa? Thank you. I've got to be very, care I've got to be very careful because I'm, I'm not going to be the, the one man in the country that goes out and slaughters all the referees and then between now and the rest of the season, I'm the most hated man in South Africa. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that VAR, the reason for VAR was to take some pressure off the referees. So those tight decisions, if you're constantly getting them wrong, your confidence as an official, it must go through the floor. It must do. When you go home in the evening and you see that you've made a massive mistake, that can't be very nice. Same as if a player makes a massive mistake, it's not very nice. Now, to, to help them make those calls, because we've been... We've had a few now. We've had a few now, and I've never said anything about referees. I've not gone out in media and said that referees need to do this or this, because I know it's such a tough job. But when it's happening, and VAR is maybe available, then that will help them and take the pressure off them so they know if there's a big call, it won't be wrong. And therefore, their confidence will stay high, and all the other calls, hopefully the standard will raise there. So... I think David was alluding to it could have been a completely different game. If we'd have got that goal or we didn't get it, they Pirates got theirs and then Pirates head it, hits the post and goes in or Brandon doesn't make the save, yeah, we can lose the game. But it's not very nice to know that, yeah, we could have been cruising at 2-0, but we end up hanging on for, for grim death at the finish. So without blasting all referees, I'm, I'm trying to give a, an objective... Uh, opinion there on why VAR, if it's in, introduced, should be introduced. 